moving on. I had mine on all day yesterday. It's back on the clock. It's back. It's the number one topic. <laughs> Porter, we, I know we've asked you this a lot, but it's been a couple days since Saturday. What not only has been the takeaway from that win since watching film, but what are the takeaways going into tomorrow night? Finding a way to win through a lot of adversity, through a lot of ups and downs in a game. There were a lot of ups and downs in that game, a lot of adversity in that game, and just to find a way to win. I mean, you, you had to um, – that's what you take away. Uh, I think we're, you know, for our guys to, I think we're three and one in those close games down the stretch and uh, to keep building confidence, man. It's, sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes things aren't going your way, whether it's a, a bad call, a missed free throw, a missed shot, a turnover. And, uh, but there's a million ways to find ways to win these games. And that's what we took out of our guys. You know, hey, you put that in the bank, you found a way to win. That's a positive. The, the belief that no matter what happens, you, you, you're, you, you know, there's a million ways to find ways to win by the end of that buzzer. You don't have any time to celebrate that, though, because you only have two days to get ready for a game. Can you kind of walk us through what that's like for a basketball team today? It's, it's um, you know, it's Saturday, uh, late Saturdays, um, Tuesday turnarounds, especially on the road. I mean, it was you know, all, all day, first time around playing Baylor this year, it was all day prepping. They got a lot of new, new faces. Um, and uh, so yesterday was, you know, so much about prepping for Baylor. Uh, you know, you work out today, you leave. And, uh, you know, just so much respect for Baylor and how they do things. Um, they're, they're, they do so many things well to prepare for them. You know, defensively, they're always switching up. They're switching up their ball screen coverages. They're switching up their zone. Uh, they press. Uh, offensively, uh, they're, they're so much movement, creativity. Um, and then they surround, they keep surrounding themselves with elite guards. You know, you think, you're sitting there scratching your head going, man, they lose Flagler, George, and Cryer, there's no way they can be as good. And all of a sudden you come up with, with Walters, Nunn, and Ray J. Dennis, and those three are elite, three, three elite guards. And Langston and Love off the bench is elite. So they just have great guards. I think Bridges, um, I mean, he really hurt us last year. A ton of respect for him is, is, is how hard he plays, how skilled he is. Um, they completely load up with new bigs. I think Missy is... Uh, I know we talked about the freshman in the league, and I, I, I didn't even follow it that he was a freshman until I saw it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So he's terrific. Um, gives them a, a defensive and an offensive dynamic. So a lot to go into prepping for Baylor on a short turnaround, especially of how good we think they are. You mentioned Luke after the game Saturday. How have, you, have you seen it grow since then? Absolutely. What I loved about Luke is we've seen him come in with a tremendous confidence. Like at Kansas, he came in. And then we've seen him where, you know, he hasn't played, which is more normal. Sometimes guys come in and they're trying to find their feet. We really are pouring into the Luke that right away, know that the team's got confidence in you to shoot it. Um, we even like him on the block. I mean, he drew three fouls last game. Um, we liked the, his passing ability. He had three assists. So um, just the Luke that has that confidence uh, to come in there because we're going to need him and we're going to play him. Well, what does that do with maybe lineup flexibility in terms of whether it's him and the five or Jalen and him together or John or Sam? Just how much does that give you extra lineup flexibility? It does help. It does help. I mean, anytime you can get another player stepping up that you feel that at this time of year is, is, can play because it's, it, so many teams are old. These atmospheres are, are really, really good. The teams are outstanding. So, you know, do we have more guys that you have confidence in that, 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 is going to embrace that moment, and I think Luke is at that point. You guys have won twice on the road this year in the Big 12. What's it going to take to get a road win in Waco? Just resiliency and grit, resiliency to, to keep fighting through hard. There's going to be a lot of hard moments on the road, a lot of hard moments playing these elite teams, and your resiliency to fight through hard, the resiliency to, to continue to guard, box out, run, I mean, in transition. So uh, a lot of grit. I mean, you're, you're going to go in there. It's, it's another – I haven't been in the new arena, but I've, I've seen it on tape and uh, very, very loud. So, But you, you, you've got to have resiliency and grit uh, and a togetherness when you're, when you're trying to battle on the road in this league. Lowe's mentioned offensively things got stagnant. What's the, I guess, recipe to just fixing that? You know, just movement. Not, you know, just not of uh, – sometimes a lot of us, they look to Javon and Lowe's, you know, and they, there's – just to get movement. I've really worked on it the last couple of days. Like yesterday we did. Um, just getting some more ball movement. Um, it's hard because you do want the ball in Javion Losa's hands. So it's a, it's a trick, you know, in there. And, um, but uh, 
I, and also the thing is not to continue to transition. I think we're at our best in transition. So sometimes, you know, um, I think they weren't, we weren't pushing it, you know, in a close game. And uh, I want to stay aggressive with the guys. I mean, that's, that's been the message. Just keep staying aggressive. If I remember correctly, Los only took five shots. Yeah. It seems like he can score or he gets going when he wants to score. Are you encourage him to take? Yeah, like against high? BYU, they were playing such a drop coverage that he he had, you know he went in and was aggressive scoring. Uh, no, I, d I definitely you know scoring for him is uh, he's such a good facilitator. He's not a selfish kid, but there's times where I want him to to be more aggressive scoring. So definitely. What what have you seen from Waldo these last four weeks? Man, I've seen uh, just a, a a young man who's plays with an urgency, plays with an edge, plays with an enthusiasm. Um, he he's. You know, he's, it's been contagious with him because every, his mind is so right, coming off the bench, just absolutely defending, running, impacting. He's been a vocal leader. He's been a vocal leader. And the guys can tell that he's playing with an urgency, that he's in his final, you know, two months of college basketball. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what I love is he's not doing it pressing. Sometimes guys get in that moment, they press. Like, oh, this is my final thing. I got to do everything. He's not. He's just got a joy with his urgency. And that's a great combination. Joy and urgency, because sometimes you can have tightness and an urgency. He's just got this joy and urgency, and he's playing loose, and he's playing great. Kind of talked see. about those veteran guys, but like Waldo, Latre, as seniors, just what kind of steadying presence do they have just with their experience? They both made little plays that don't show up in the box score. I've said two games in a row, Latre made some 50-50 rebounds that came out of a, a pack with a, with a big time. Waldo got that poke at the end of the game. Just, just veteran plays to keep playing through things. And there's, you know, like I said, there's a million ways to win games and to find ways, and whether it's a deflection, a rebound, a 50-50 ball, a screen and a right execution, um, those guys have been in that moment. What's your take on just where Baylor's at right now? They, yeah. they went through like a three-game losing streak earlier, then you know won some, and then they're coming off the loss in Lawrence. I think I think when you look at it, any team in this league, any team that goes on a three-game losing streak, there's no reason to panic. It doesn't mean like they're not. It just it easily can happen. All right, so um, I don't even think like oh they went on a losing streak. Like they, they've been they've been elite. They're tough games. I mean they're tough games. They lost one on the road at Texas at the buzzer. I mean, these are tough games. They lost, a, I don't know how many overtimes a TCU game. So I don't put anything into anybody going on a couple game losing streaks in this league. It's, it's, it's what it is. Everything is hard. Um, we know how good they are. I mean, they are good on both ends. Defensively, offensively, extremely well coached. Um, so we, we got to be ready. We got to be ready to bring it. Have a, have a, we got we to play to a high standard going into Baylor. Stacked some good offensive performances. How important is carrying that momentum into uh, Baylor? It was great. I, I actually, I almost never look. I'm, this might be a first. I almost never look at how many block shots we have. We just simply haven't been that team. And I, for some reason, I was like, man, I felt like we blocked a lot from our guards. And I went and we had nine. We had nine block shots last game. I, I don't even know if that could be a, a high for us. But it was, it's coming from our wings. You know, Jalen and Waldo and Otega, I think they all got a block shot. And that is, um, that means he's not quitting on plays. Like he's coming, if the guy drives by him, he's not quitting on it. He's not fouling. Um, but I, I, I just think that he's, he's getting his, I think him and Waldo and Latre or, and Otega can be bigger wings, outstanding defenders that can create, create some turnovers with either a block shot, a deflection, pressure. So I think, I think Jalen um, gives you that with his length and I think it also even if it's like any shot blocker a big a lot of times when a bit you know a big can block it might affect you you might not get the block shot but it affects you I think that's starting to happen with Jalen excuse me people are starting to realize you know like he, he, he might, you know at the end there he might get it because he's he's really timing them up very well Porter was around this time last year oh, about Notre Dame. <laughs> I, I, I don't even. I, I, anytime I hear a question that starts out with last year, <laughs> it makes me want to end this. But now there's rumors, reports. Sorry, don't, delayed, no, about not default. even, don't even, haven't talked to anybody, not even thinking about anything. I'm just absolutely not even engaging into anything like that. 100%. Uh, so excited about where we're at with the team. This is everything we've tried to build for is, is being in this position and, um, same comment as last year. All, 
all rumor mill fodder. Nothing, nothing true. Do you have a game plan if one of your players fouls out on the bench again this time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for